This is our first tutorial in the series on cloth simulation in Blender. In this tutorial, we'll discuss about the basic setup and some important settings in the cloth physics, so this is a foundation level tutorial. We will take several examples, but first let us start with a very simple scene like this. Later we'll get into more complex scenarios. So here is the default cube of Blender, and we want to drop a piece of cloth on this. So let us first add a plane. We'll enlarge it maybe by a factor of 3. And then we need to drag the plane upward, above the cube like this. Now, before we do anything else, we need to ensure that there are enough number of subdivisions for this cloth object. So go to the Modifiers tab, and add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. Switch over to this simple option, and then increase these levels sufficiently, depending upon the size of the cloth. You can also use the Loop Cut tool in the Edit mode, it is the same thing. Next, go to the Physics tab and enable the Cloth option from here. You'll get so many fields. They control the behavior of the cloth, but all these fields are not very important for a simple case, so we'll discuss only some specific ones today. You can also use a preset material, so if you select leather for example, all these default values will change as per the property of leather. Let's go with a cotton material. And with this default settings, if we run the simulation, we'll see that the cloth is simply passing through the cube. So it fails, because the cube is not interacting with our cloth. For this cloth, in the cloth physics, there is a section called collision. And the option of object collision is already enabled, but the same has to be done for the cube as well. To do that, enable the collision physics here. Please remember that we're adding a collision physics to the cube, not to the cloth object. And even if the cube is participating in a rigid body physics, you still need to enable this collision physics. This particle section is not relevant for us. We need to focus on this soft body and cloth. We'll go with these default values, but if something does not work correctly, you may need to experiment with some of these values over here. For example, ideally this inner value should be close to zero. Now, if we play the animation again, we'll see that this time, the cloth nicely wraps around the cube as expected. So it is working, but there are some other problems, like the cloth surface does not have a very smooth profile. So select the cloth, and go to the Modifiers tab. This is our subdivision surface modifier, and a cloth modifier is automatically added by Blender, because we have turned on the cloth physics for the plane. So, let us minimize this, and add one more subdivision surface modifier. We'll use the Catmull Plark option, with a level of 2, and this modifier should go after the cloth modifier. So the cloth surface will become smooth. But a bigger problem is, the cloth has penetrated inside the cube, in multiple places or at the corners. We need to take care of that, because it is a serious issue. There are multiple things that we can do here. In the cloth physics, we can see a field called quality steps, this controls the overall quality of the cloth simulation. And also down below, under the collision section, we have one more field called quality. This specifically controls the quality of the collisions. So if you increase this value, you can easily get rid of the problem of penetrations like this, but it will also take higher baking time. And you can also try to increase this distance value, it creates an artificial gap between the cloth and the target, Sometimes we need to use this field, in addition to an appropriate quality settings for the best results. There is another method which works for some simple objects. In the collision physics for the cube, we have a field called single-sided. If you turn this on, you can get rid of this penetration issues. But sometimes this can create an erroneous output, as we'll see through another example, so you need to be very cautious while using this option. So, let us go to the first frame, and then run the simulation again. This time we'll see that the cloth nicely falls on the cube, and it perfectly wraps this object. There is no penetration, but there is still another problem. To see that, we need to first enable the face orientation. We can see that the inner surface of the cloth has come to outside. This blue color is used for the outer surface, and this red color is for the inside surface or the backside. They got mixed up after the cloth wrapped the cube. Let us verify it in real time. We'll discover that the red side is crossing through the blue and coming out, so the cloth is penetrating itself. And to stop that, select the cloth object. Then in the cloth physics, scroll down to the collisions section. We have a field called self-collisions, we have to simply enable this field. 
Let us again run the simulation from the beginning and verify the result. A piece of cloth should never penetrate itself, so I believe this should be always turned on by default. Anyway, this time the blue and the red sides remained intact, so we are all set to go for the final baking. First, let us change this collision quality to 5. Then scroll up, and we'll change the overall quality value to say 10. It should be sufficient. Then expand this cache section. We can bake our simulation from here. You need to ensure that these frame numbers are matching with the start and end frames of your desired animation. And you can enable this disk cache option, it will then save the baked data in a folder, as it does by default for a fluid simulation. And if another blender physics is present in your scene, like if rigid body is used for example, you can delete all the baked data from here, and then use this option to bake all the physics together. It will show the progress here and take some time to complete. Now, we want to add some thickness to the cloth. Although a cloth is a very thin material, it is not paper thin. So go to the modifiers tab, then minimize this, and let us add one, solidify modifier. We'll change the offset value to zero. And the thickness should be a low value, like 0.003. This modifier should go after the cloth modifier. And we don't need to bake it again, because this solidify modifier simply adds a thickness to the existing cloth deformations that have been baked already, but if you add any deformation modifier before the cloth modifier, then you have to bake it again. And for the surface smoothness, you may like to also enable this shade smooth option for our cloth. We can now run the simulation once again. It will be very smooth this time, because we have used high quality settings for the simulation. And if you want to change the simulation speed, like if you want a slow motion effect, or you want a fast forward, you have to go to the physics tab, and play with this value called, speed multiplier, and you can also animate this field. These are currently disabled, you can get them enabled by deleting the baked data. Finally, you can add some suitable textured material to the cloth, and get some beautiful result like this. You can use a rigid body, or any other type of object as well. All you have to do is, just add a collision physics to that object for a cloth interaction. Now, let's say you want this cloth to always remain in this condition. A tablecloth is supposed to be always in contact with the table and lie flat. But if we go to the first frame, we'll see that there is a gap between our cloth and the table. So if you want the cloth to always stay on the table naturally, go to some frame in our timeline, maybe the last frame where the cloth is settled on the table and there is no movement. Then in the modifiers tab, we know that this cloth modifier is added by Blender. Because we have enabled its cloth physics properties over here. Now back to the modifiers tab, if you just simply apply the cloth modifier, this position will become permanent. Now even if you go to the first frame, the cloth will remain like this, it won't change its position or its shape because it is permanently deformed. And in the physics tab, you can see that the cloth modifier is removed. But if you want the cloth object to still show a cloth behavior, in this position, you can enable the cloth physics again, and it will work as a cloth. Let us now take our final example. In this scene, we have a chair, and a cloth is falling on this chair. Initially, it seems that the cloth is behaving perfectly, and there is no problem. But soon we'll discover that the cloth has penetrated the chair, at multiple different points. If we turn on the material view mode, the penetration of the cloth becomes clearly visible. We have similar level of penetrations in the backside as well, and we need to fix this. First, we verify in the cloth settings that a high value is used for the overall quality of the simulation, and also for the collision quality we are good. So quality is not an issue, but we have to verify the collision settings for the chair. Now, the cloth is falling on the chair with a velocity, and this velocity is the number one reason why it penetrates the object, under that force. In the collision settings of the chair, we have a field called field absorption. Let us change it to say 1. It will reduce the velocity of the colliding object or the cloth, and absorb the force, so the penetration will be less, but if you want little bit of bounciness as well, you can also use a value like 0.95. And we have to also disable this single-sided option, our cloth simulation quality is set quite high, so it will be taken care of. Finally, clear the cache, and then bake it as usual. Once the simulation is complete, we can go back to the first frame and run it again. These are some simple examples, we are coming up with more tutorials on cloth simulation, with further examples, and tricks, like interaction of cloth with a moving object.
So, we can see that there is no penetration this time, and the cloth looks really good, even in the backside. We should verify it on all sides, let us check the right hand side as well. Cool. So we learned about the basic settings in cloth simulation, and you can get started right away. We also learned about some preliminary error handling as well. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.